Hello and welcome. If you want to be a good and compliant internal auditor, you need to learn performance standards in depth. You need to know what are the requirements of IAA in the performance standards. And you need to understand the application of these standards very well. So now we are entering into this phase. Uh, from now, uh, we are starting all our, uh, to cover all these standards, performance standards. Uh, we will uh, start with uh, uh, the standard 2000, which is about managing the internal audit activity. And then we'll cover all 33 standards uh, in, in sequence and we'll try to understand the requirement of IAA, practical implication of these and simultaneously we will cover the implementation guides. So let's start with asking some interesting questions. How internal audit add value to the organization? What chief audit executive should do if there is resource limitation? Which tools the chief audit executive may use to evaluate the efficiency and effectiveness of the internal audit activity? How to implement a systematic and disciplined approach to manage the internal audit activity? So let's try to get responses to all these questions and understand what the standard 2000 is having for us. Before we go to the requirement of the standard directly, let's understand as per the implementation guide, the minimum criteria like what is the requirement of uh, this standard actually. So this standard communicates the minimum criteria that the chief audit executive must fulfill in managing the internal audit activity. And also reviewing the requirement related to each element in the interpretation may help the chief audit executive to prepare to implement this standard. So the basic requirement of this standard 2000 managing the internal audit activity is that the chief audit executive must effectively manage the internal audit activity to ensure it adds value to the organization. And when we talk about adds value, we can go back and read again the mission of internal audit. Now the second question is how internal audit activity adds value to the organization. So internal audit activity adds value to the organization and its, its, its stakeholders when it considers strategies, objectives and risks and it strives to offer ways to enhance governance risk management and control processes and it objectively provides relevant assurance. So how internal audit activity is effectively managed? The internal audit activity is effectively managed when it achieves the purpose and responsibility included in the internal audit charter and it conforms with the standards and also conforms is individual members conform with the code of ethics in the standards and also it considers the trends and emerging issues that could impact the organization. So therefore it is crucial that the chief audit executive regularly reviews the international professional practices framework to address the details of conformance. So standard 2000 points out several fundamentals. They are required to fulfill the principles that the internal audit activity adds value to the organization. So let's see how the chief audit executive can move forward in this. 
The chief audit executive may start by reviewing the internal audit activities, purpose and responsibility, which is agreed upon by the chief audit executive, senior management and the board and recorded in the internal audit charter. So this is something which is available in black and white uh, in the basic structure of the internal audit department. Also, the chief audit executive should study the organizational chart, which can help in identifying the organization's stakeholders, structure and reporting relationships. Also, the organization's strategic plan, the review of that will give the chief audit executive insight into the organization's strategies, objectives, risk, and as well as potential risk if they've identified the future plans. And the risk considered should include the trends and emerging issues, such as those involving the organization's industry. The internal audit profession itself regulatory requirements and the, and, and the political economic situation, these all also part of this, this review in the trends and emerging issues. So the internal audit needs to be updated not only in the profession of internal audit but in the industry as well so that they have a business acumen and they have the knowledge of what is going on in the industry. Chief audit executive may also have discussion with the senior management and the board about the strategic plan or the business plan company is having because this can lay groundwork for the, for the chief audit executive to manage the internal audit activity in a way that adds value to the objectives which the management is targeting to achieve and how it can add value, it can add value by enhancing the organization's processes in governance, risk management, control and by providing the relevant assurance. Now, after considering the information which we discussed earlier, uh, like the purpose and responsibility of the internal audit activity as mentioned in the charter, the organizational chart of the, of the for stakeholders structure and the reporting relationships, and then the organization strategic plan and the discussion of with the senior management board about the strategic plan. Now, chief, chief audit executive is in a position that he can develop an internal audit strategy and approach that aligns with the goals and expectations of the organization's leadership. In addition to that, the chief audit executive creates a risk-based internal audit plan. Uh, th this will, we will discuss in the standard 2010 planning, which we will cover later on. So for this risk-based audit plan, it is to determine the priorities of the internal audit activities, assurance and consulting engagement. This process takes into account the input of senior management and the board as well as documented annual risk assessment. This is again covered by standard 2010, which we will discuss later on. In the internal audit plan, the chief audit executive typically defines the internal audit activities scope and deliverables and specifies the resources required to achieve the plan and also outlines an approach to develop the internal audit activity and also outline the approach to measure the performance and progress against the plan. So what a chief audit executive should do if there is a resource limitation? According to standard 2020, which is communication and approval, uh, the chief audit executive is responsible for communicating the plan, resource requirement, any significant interim changes to the plan, and also the impact of resource limitations to the board and senior management to discuss, deliberate, and then reaching to an approval level and that what they need to do on the plan, resource requirement, and any limitations and how to cover that. Uh, also, if we refer to 2030, resource management, uh, both of these standards we will cover later on. The chief audit executive must also ensure that the internal audit resources are deployed effectively to achieve the approved plan. So what is most important practically, I've, I've noticed that most important thing is that chief audit executive notice that there is a limitation of resources. There are a lot of areas they are not covering. <clears throat> but they don't speak up, they don't go to 
board and may be under the influence of management or uh, sometimes there is fear uh, they need to speak up and say that this is what we are required to do and if we and just identify that and document that in some meetings that there is a resource limitation even though if management or the board are not approving that at least this is documented and you have covered your risk we posed a question that how to implement a systematic and disciplined approach to manage the internal audit activity to implement a systematic and disciplined approach to manage the internal audit activity the chief audit executive considers number 1 the mandatory guidance of the international professional practices framework and number 2 establishes the internal audit policies and procedures uh, we this will get get more details in standard 2040 about this internal audit policy and procedure documents is what i mean like is often are assembled into an internal audit manual so normally you will see in the internal audit functions there are internal audit manuals which are having the po internal policies and procedures of internal audit department and which are required by the all the internal auditors to go through and understand <clears throat> and implement in their day to day activities the document may include methods and tools for training the internal auditors the chief audit executive may require internal auditors to acknowledge by signature uh, that they have uh, re, uh, they have read and understood uh, the policies and procedures but this is not a mandatory requirement standard 2000 introduces the chief audit executive responsibility for ensuring that the internal audit activity adds value to the organization by objectively providing relevant assurance and offering suggestions to enhance the organization's governance risk management and control processes 2100 series of the standard and implementation guide describe the requirements and processes that enable the internal audit activity to complete these objectives now let's see that why in the consideration for implementation that how effective management is is conducted by the chief audit executive the chief audit executive ensures effective management by monitoring conformance with the mandatory guidance of the ippf at both the levels of the internal auditor and the internal audit activity as a whole also chief audit executive responsible for implementing quality assurance and improvement program uh, you can refer back to the standard 1300 we have fully covered in a video in a couple of videos actually and for implementing the methods and tools related to 1200 series of standards if you may recall 1200 series of standards this was the the proficiency and due professional care the chief audit executive must also evaluate the internal audit activities effectiveness to achieve conformance with the standard 2000 which is the performance standard so the chief audit executive may develop matrix To, for evaluating the efficiency of an eff and effectiveness of the internal audit activity so let's see what are the tools available so chief auditor is a may solicit the feedback through post audit client surveys uh, and you need to very carefully draft this survey uh, because sometimes this misguides uh, also completing the annual performance reviews of internal auditors individual internal auditors implementing the quality assurance and improvement program and benchmarking so they you need to compare the organization's internal audit activity against the similar <coughs> internal audit groups in the industry uh, to understand uh, your performance and where do you stand so let's see how we can demonstrate conformance by keeping the required documents Uh, for this standard so evidence of how well the internal audit activity has been managed and whether it has added value to the organization that can be kept by having the results of post engagement client surveys and other sources of feedback in addition internal and external assessments uh, can help uh, in measuring the internal audit activities conformance with the mandatory guidance of IPPF 
including performance metrics, performance reviews or evaluations related to managing the internal audit activity and the results of the comparisons against the industry norm which is the benchmarking we discussed before. Also because the standard 2000 requires evidence of conformance not only at the level of internal audit activity but also at the level of individual internal auditors. Uh, the, this may include that we need to keep documentation of all the supervisory evaluations, peer reviews, uh, which can help in understanding uh, that these documents are being prepared and these assessments are being done by the chief audit executive. So this is how it, it, it covers, uh, you can demonstrate the conformance. Also uh, you can add to this list more like the results uh, and, and the minutes of the board meetings and audit committee meetings, any uh, appreciation email from the management or from the, from the audit committee uh, uh, or appreciation remarks during the meetings uh, on achieving or adding value to the organization. Also if internal auditors have identified some potential or key risk uh, and address those issues on timely basis. Uh, that is also can be kept as a record uh, for demonstrating conformance for this purpose. So thank you so much for your time, hope you have enjoyed the video, I have tried my level best to give you as much as possible. Uh, I have to do a lot of work uh, and for, for these notes, for reading, going through, developing my understanding, so hopefully you have also uh, uh, getting benefit of all my efforts and this is what is the main purpose that uh, the, we need to uh, promote the internal audit role, internal audit function uh, in its basic spirit in a way as it should be as per the standard uh, because there are a lot of misconceptions about the role of internal audit among the management and among the internal auditors as well. So we need to we need to know and we need to uh, market the correct role of internal audit and that is the main purpose behind that. The, this is only can be done once we get the true and uh, basic knowledge of the internal audit uh, standards and IIA has the best guideline for that purpose. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for your time. Please subscribe the channel, share my videos, let other people also get the benefit. And, and hopefully we will meet again in another interesting video. Don't miss the performance standard part because it's the most important area. Thank you so much.